Hey everybody, hi, my name is Jen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna lead off by saying that I've been trying to film this video for about the last 20 minutes. Uh, my neighbor behind me here has decided to mow. Um, now's not a good time, neighbor. I love you. You're a wonderful neighbor, but please stop. So if it gets loud, I'll have to pause. Such is life. Um, right. So, all of that being said, I am doing a tag video today because I ran out of ideas. So, um, yeah. Um, okay. So I picked up, it's called the Ultimate Book Tag. No, it's not. It's called the Life in Books Tag. The Ultimate Book, I decided not to do the Ultimate Book Tag. Um, it's called the Life in Books Tag. And I found it on a, a blogger called Hannah's Bookshelf. Um, I will link her down below. I may have used her before. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, I found it on her on her uh, blog, and I decided to use it. So there you go. Um, I decided to challenge myself on this tag to use only books that are on my academic um, bookshelf. I was able to do that with all but one question, and you'll know it when I get there. Um, so yeah, so I used um, only books that are on my academic bookshelves, and uh, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> A little something different, I guess. Um, right, so the first question is to choose a book for each of your initials. So my first initial is J, obviously. So I chose a book called Joust and Tournaments by Stephen Mulberger. Um, you will see, you will definitely see a theme um, because all of these books are basically my master's degree. There you go. Um, for my middle initial L, I chose a book called Luther, Man Between God and the Devil by Heiko Oberman. And for my last initial K, I chose King Arthur in Popular Culture by Elizabeth S. Sklar and Donald Hoffman. So that was fun. Um, I had to go through my library <laughs> really closely because I didn't have any J's. It was that or Jane Eyre, and yeah, J Jane Eyre doesn't count. Um, so, uh, right. Count your age along your bookshelf and tell you tell me what book. So the 45th book on my bookshelves, because I am 45, uh, is a book called Cultural Theory and Popular Culture, a Reader. It was edited by John Story. I don't remember it. Um, I had it for one of my theory classes, um, but I don't remember what was in it. <laughs> so I have to go back and read it again. Um, a book set in your city or country. So I live in a little bitty town, and so there are not going to be any books on this shelf that are set in my city. Um, and I kind of had trouble with finding a book set in my country because um, everything is in Europe. Um, but I did find, because I did take a couple of classes on American history, so I chose a book called And the Band Played On, Politics, People, and the AIDS Epidemic by Randy Schultz. Um, if you haven't read this book, um, it's a chunker. It's a chunker. It's a good thick one. Um, but it's really readable, and it goes into... Um, the AIDS epidemic um, as seen by someone that was there. Um, so it's definitely worth reading if you're at all interested in um, queer history and especially queer 20th, 20th century history. So yeah, there you go. Um, a book representing a destination you'd love to travel to. I chose The Fall of Constantinople 1453 by Stephen Runciman. On top of being a book that I love simply because it's the end of the Fourth Crusade and I love talking about the Fourth Crusade. I could genuinely talk about the Fourth Crusade for like an hour. I have a whole lecture. Um, this, uh, this book is, of course, set in Constantinople, which today is Istanbul, not Constantinople. Um, and I would love to travel there. So there you go. That was an easy one, actually. Um... Yeah, Istanbul, not Constantinople. If you know, you know. <laughs> um, the next question, I'm going through this really fast. Yeah, the next question is your favorite childhood book. So obviously, I wasn't reading academic books as a kid. So 
Um, for this one, I did go out um, and say uh, The 101 Dalmatians by Dodie Smith. Not the Disney version. I did not like the Disney version. Um, I like the original version. I'm very persnickety about it. And, um, yeah. So there you go. Um, right. A book that's your favorite cup. I'm going to have a really hard time coming up with the, the digital images of these books. It just hit me. It just hit me. I'm going to have a really hard time with this. I should maybe get these books out. Hmm. Eh. I'm lazy. Um, a book that's your favorite color. Um, I did actually get up and walk over to my shelves for this rather than relying on my library Excel sheet. <laughs> and I had to go look and see what colors everything was. Because most of these books are like, I have a lot of orange books and red books, and I'm not big fans of orange or red, go figure. Um, so, uh, I ended up choosing a book called Templars and Hospitallers as Professed Religious in the Holy Land by Jonathan Riley Smith. Um, I've not actually read this book. I think I used it for um, some quotes one time. Um, I was doing a paper on the Templars. And so I used it for, like, research. But I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, anyway, it's purple. And I like purple. Purple is my favorite color. So there you go. Um, the next question I had to leave blank. Because the question is, a character who matches the description of your star sign? Look. Look. So, yeah. That, that question, um, I mean, even if I wasn't, even if I wasn't constraining myself to academic stuff, um, I would have no idea where to even begin with a character matching the description of my star sign because I am, I mean, amongst other reasons, um, I'm right on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius, which basically means my star sign is nothing but chaos. Um, so there you go. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'll go back to that fourth crusade business because wow was that chaotic. Like I said, I have an hour's lecture on the fourth crusade. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite thing. Um, book you have the fondest memories of. I'm going to tell a story here. This book is called How the Scots Invented the Modern World. It's by Alastair Moffat. I took a class in between my... Um, in between my undergrad and my master's and um, I took it it was it didn't count for credit towards my master's um, but I took it anyway because I needed to do something over the summer and so I took this class and it was basically like Scotland and the history of Scotland and um, the professor um, <laughs> Um, super, super fantastic guy. Super fantastic guy. Um, he uh, assigned us a paper. And I, being the academic that I am, wrote the paper. And I used like five or six different sources in writing the paper. And when he handed it back to me, I got an A on the paper. But when he handed it back to me, he was like, next time could you just use the books that are assigned for the course? And I was like, damn sorry but anyway that was one of the books that I used <laughs> so yeah I do have a fond memory of that book um right book you had the most difficulty reading damn um these are academic bookshelves so there's a lot of stuff on there that I had a really hard time reading um a lot of stuff but I decided on the book that I decided on because I had a hard time reading it for a different reason. Um, and the book that I chose was called Five Chimneys, A Woman Survivor's True Story of Auschwitz by Olga Lingyel. And I don't think I need to talk much about why I had such a hard time reading it, but I had a hard time reading it. Um, yeah. So the last question is, which book will give you the biggest sense of accomplishment when you finish it? Um, here again, that was a hard one to answer because there's a lot of books on my list that I've gutted, but I haven't actually read. But I have a book 
on the wall, because I have some wall shelves up here, and I'll show them off eventually. Once I get this room clean, I'm going to do a book tour. Anyway, unrelated. I have a book called Chivalry by Leon Gautier, and he's a chunker. Um, it is at least as big as the Priory of the Orange Tree, and it's an academic text about the ideas and concepts involved in chivalry. And someday I will read that book. That day is not today. But someday I will read that book. Eventually. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, there you go. There is a brief trip through my academic bookshelves. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but that was my history master's degree. I didn't even get into the stuff for my English masters because I don't know it's not as interesting to me I, my history's, history is really where my heart lies and I did the English because I wanted to do the PhD in medievalism um, but then I ended up not doing the PhD so there you go but history is really where my heart lies I love it so yeah um there you go. Um, that's what I got. So I'm going to go um, see if I can find pictures of these books that I can put up here for you to look at. Um, best of luck to me, I guess. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go. That's all I got. I uh, don't got nothing else. So leave me comments. Um, tell me the, your answers to some of these questions. Um, especially if you, if you, I'm not tagging people in this because whatever. But um, if you want to do it, if you find it interesting, please do it and link me so that I can also watch it and give you a like. Um, speaking of likes, do like and subscribe. Um, hit the little bell for notifications if you want more of me. And why wouldn't you want more of me? I'm amazing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, subscribe, bell, comment, etc. Uh, I'm going to go. Don't forget, I do, of course, I do videos every Tuesday, and I do sprints on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time, so join me. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for being here. Um, stay cool, and remember, like I always say, life's too short to read bad books. Bye.